Hello and welcome to another episode of Chateau de Cogda, or if you want to be boring, What, Where, When, the clever lateral thinking game uh, where you have just a minute that separates you from success or defeat. We have our regular panellists with us today. We have Nick Gates. Uh, good evening. Uh, Dan Peake. Aloha. And Lewis Murphy. Hello there. And you've been on the show, uh, this is your fourth time. How do you uh, think you're working together as a team? I think pretty well. Normally normally one of us will start down a, a, an alley and we'll either decide together pretty much immediately whether it's a, a good way to go or, or clearly wrong. Um, I think we're quite good at working out when the correct, what the correct answer is, whether you found it, when you find it. So it's working out quite well, I think. And do you think you're getting better at the game as time goes on? Um, <laughs> Wait till the end of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's uh, let's see what happens then. Uh, we have our regular roulette wheel of 13 questions. Each of those you can solve within a one-minute time limit. If you get it right, it's a point for you. It's, if you don't, it's a point for the audience, which counts as me and the rest of the people that have sent in questions for this episode. Uh, one other little rule, if you're really sure of an answer, you can shout answer straight away, and if you're correct, you get that minute uh, carried forward to a later question in this episode. Okay, uh, Nick, you're the team captain for today, so uh, off we go. Pick a number. Number one. Number one. Okay. To the nearest hour, what is the official course record for the fastest person to have completed the full London Marathon of 26 miles, 385 yards, as a valid competitor on the day of the event, with no special privileges, in full view of the TV cameras, marshals and crowds? Well, the obvious answer is... Oh, I'm wondering, is it, is it one hour? Is it someone who's like one of the disabled uh, uh, contestant, uh, competitors? I mean, under an hour 30, that would be, be one hour then, wouldn't it? Because normally it's going to be two hours. How long does Paula Radcliffe or, or like a... a North, is that about two hours? About two, two and a half hours. Uh, about two hours for the men. Um, what? What is the trick to this question? No special privileges. In I mean, this, this the race is not a special race. It's just, it's just one that starts first. And uh, it's, I like the Sorry, I like the idea of of the the wheelchair race, which happens before. I do like that event. It's. It, I was thinking, what about just normal traffic? Because it just says completed the course, but that it's still got to be in front of TV cameras, marshals, and crowds. Yeah. Although there are CCTV, ca- but no marshals. So, but I like your idea of the wheelchair race. Okay, Nick. What are you going to get for? One. He's right. Um, so it's it, 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 it's not to do with like the individual times. Uh, like the, just because you start five hours later, that means that your time is five hours late. Uh, it's it's still to do with your official time from start line to finish line. Uh, but you are correct. Uh, what happened was, in I think the record was set in 2009 by an Australian wheelchair racer. And the wheelchair racers actually go quicker than the runners. Um, and the record is something like 1 hour 28. So rounded to the nearest hour, it would be 1 hour. So that's the trick as far as it... I mean, you really started out pretty quickly, but as far as the trick to the question goes, that is it. Uh, uh, yeah, for men, it's something like two hours and six minutes, and there's uh, a lot of speculation as to whether a two-hour marathon is ever going to be possible. Um, but um, that's right. So you sussed that on very quickly. So a point on the board straight away. Okay, uh, let's go with Dan for our next question, please. Number nine, please. Number nine. Okay, here we go. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Though few people know the good book, chapter and verse these days, what is notable about this Bible passage? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish or have eternal life. It's not one of those phrases that's all the, all the letter of the alphabet. It's not Z in it. Um, 
Is this one of those things where no. one of those famous misprints made it mangled and get it to me? Oh, that's could, pretty possible. Could be something like that. Is it one of these things that's just not in the Bible despite people thinking it is? That's... I'm not sure all about this Bible passage. Yeah, maybe. Because, I mean, this all sounds familiar, but I, uh, I couldn't... I don't know. I think it would be in the Bible, though. Yeah, I think it would be. What, what was your answer again, Lewis? I've forgotten already, for some reason. <laughs> it was one of those uh, misprints. Like, misprints, uh... that's it, yeah. So write that down. Um, can you remember what was misprinted? You can work out what's misprinted in it. Uh, no, but I think for some reason that sounds quite Maybe good. an extra knot or something. Okay. Um, right, you've got to give us an answer. Uh, you, Nick? It's it's uh, it's famously misprinted in the King James Bible. Okay, the answer is it's John three sixteen. Ah. Right. So, what is John three sixteen? I don't know. Is it just a particularly referenced passage that people will just use as shorthand for something? I feel like I recognise the the term John three sixteen, but. Uh... Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's the phrase. Uh, well, that is, uh, <laughs> popped up. <laughs> I'll admit I recognise it more from wrestling as Austin three sixteen, but uh, that's not actually in the Bible. No, it's it's the one that people have on signs at at um, sports grounds and things like that. And uh, there was one man that was famous for for holding it up, and uh, he. Uh, uh, gain, gained a lot of um, sort of fame through that, and uh, so um, it became a, a a famous thing that uh, uh, pops up, and it's been on uh, all sorts of things, like uh, hidden on um, sort of paper cups and uh, you know just sort of random bits of computer code and all sorts of things like that. So. Um, that's that's where it's come from. Um, there was there's the guy that I was referring to. I've just find, finally found his name. He was uh, called Rainbow Man hmm. uh, because I think he had was it a rainbow wig on or something like that. Um, and uh, uh, unfortunately, um, uh, he sort of went a bit mad, and that sort of gets leads to a rather sad story that I won't go into here. But uh, yeah, anyway, that's that's where uh, it, what's what, what it actually is. John three sixteen. In case you ever wondered, right? What's one to us? Uh, let's go with Lewis for the next number, please. Uh, let's go for number twelve. Number twelve. Is it the speed round? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Supply the missing words in these Russian sayings. You've got to get all three of these right in the minute. Blank three times, cut once. All cats are grey at blank. And when money talks, the truth is blank. I, I, why, sort of, this the first one's been annoying me. Is it, is it fold three times at once? I like magic Russian dolls or something. Um, all cats no. are grey at birth. I was thinking birth. And maybe when money talks, the truth is listening. Um, uh, but certainly Maybe the truth is expensive. <laughs> well, that works as well. Um, for the first one, I was thinking uh, measure three times, cut once, but yeah, that's the DIY. I don't know well, <laughs> where it comes from. Um, uh, sorry, it, it looks so familiar that one. Um, yeah. I- I like so, your I like your DIY one. I think that, that I think I think I'll go for that. I think all great cats are great at birth. Um, I think that's reasonable. I like listening. I think that that makes poetic sense. Or you is know, it could be like, all like, cats like are grey at dawn or dusk or something? Well, it could be that as well. Um, <sighs> like wow. All those Russians. Right. <laughs> Can I have you three answers, please? Uh, measure birth listening. Okay, you have got all right. Right. So all cats are great at night, and when money talks, the truth is silent, or anything uh, related uh, to silent or quiet, I would have uh, gone with. Um, 
Yes, actually quite a lot of Russian sayings uh, are just Russian versions of ones that we have. They're just slightly transliterated into a, a different way. I think there's something like uh, chickens should be uh, counted in October or something like that, which is just <laughs> like a, a way of saying don't count your chickens before they've hatched. So uh, uh, quite often they find a different way of saying the same sort of proverb. Uh, okay, so I'm afraid that's one to us. Uh, okay, Nick, you can choose the next one, please. Thirteen. Thirteen. Here we go. In order, which compass directions are represented by these hieroglyphs? Right, I've got these tides. I'm expect... Can I have you to do with the Nile? Because yeah. hieroglyphs to Egypt and the Nile, you would be able to sail north up the Nile without a sail because of the yeah. current. Is my yes. Thinking. So the, the second back. one would be north because you would just flow with the with the tide. With the river. Yeah. Uh, and the first one would be south because you would need the wind. Yeah, I think that's... Uh... That makes so much sense to me. That makes sense to me as well. The Nile does go north south, isn't it? <laughs> Definitely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <I'd> actually... <laughs> and it opens on the north into the Mediterranean, there, the Nile Delta. Good. So, can I just check that we haven't got it the wrong way round? Because. The current would go out towards the sea, wouldn't it? So does that mean it's coming the from the north or to the north? To the north. So, okay. the without a sail is north. I'm fairly confident. Okay. All right, uh, Nick, your answer, please. South North. Correct. Good one. Yep, exactly right. Uh, yes, the, the Nile goes very north-south, and obviously Nile is very, very important in uh, Egyptian culture. And uh, so the uh, hieroglyph for travelling northerly um, is uh, just a, a boat with a, a rudder, um, and you could you could actually uh, row if you wanted to, um, but uh, you can't do it the other way. You need uh, wind assistance, um, and if you try to row, you, you, the oar would just snap because it just was the far too too much strain. So um, yes, and uh, luckily in that region, the prevailing winds uh, do come from the north and blow south southerly. So oh, that's quite useful. Um, that's exactly. I thought that was quite neat, wasn't it? How that all worked out for them. So, yeah, very good. Excellent question. Um, okay, let's go with another one. Dan, please. Uh, number five, please. Number five. Here we go. In 1925, Dr. Crippen almost met a sticky end when he was rescued from the locked chamber of a building on fire. In the same disaster, despite desperate attempts to save them, sportsmen, nobles, and over 40 MPs perished, and many others were badly disfigured. Which mm. London venue had burnt down? In 1925. Um, sticky end. That's, that's got to be a clue, isn't it? It does, yeah. So some sort of uh, cake factory or sugar... <laughs> Badly disfigured as well. Um, why were desperate? Why did sportsmen die and they all sort of? I mean, oh, oh surely... I know what it is. I know what it is. Um, uh, is it uh, Madame Tussauds? Oh, um, ah, yeah, I like that. That's very good. I can read. I can see that immediately. You, know, you said it. Because, um, yeah, badly disfigured and they'd have melted a sticky end because, obviously, again, the, the wax would have... Yeah. Um, okay. Would have stuck down if, if they was starting to melt. And perished does not necessarily mean died, but it no. was pe- perished in a different sense. So I'm happy with that. I don't think it's badly disfigured if they uh, <laughs> melted. Okay, Nick, do your worst. Madam Two Swords. That's right. Yeah, you've got all the parts there. Um, the only thing you didn't quite get uh, the, the reasoning for was locked chamber. What would that be? Chamber of Horrors? Yeah, the Chamber of Horrors, yeah. And um, Dr. Crippen uh, 
famous mass murderer and uh people were, were genuinely genuine genuinely quite worried <laughs> that he he'd uh, perished in the fire so they were asking the um, 